But I don't what know. percentage I don't of our know owners if, are white? I, exactly. Are I'm about to say, I don't know right. about if nobody thinks that's a problem. He little, talked about the NFL and he doesn't hear one anybody complaining about that. Many. And I'm saying one that that's why are they yelling like this? Let's start with an easy one. Um, <laughs> I'd like you all to give me your definition of the word racism. I'm just going to go with the traditional um, understanding in a way that I've learned it is racism is power and privilege um, put together to then disadvantage those who don't have the same power and privilege because of skin color. I think racism starts with a level of prejudice, but I think it's deeper in that it's not just an individual situation. So I think the privilege and power, it's like a three-legged stool and all three of those privilege, power and prejudice contribute to making racism what it is. Um, I would give it just a more narrow definition as similar of just judging someone by their skin color. Uh, it's not a lear it's a learned behavior, not born that way. Rhonda, you mentioned what I have learned was it was this. So can you talk about where where did you learn this sort of definition of racism? Personally, at a personal level, in college was actually my first experience with like interpersonal racism, that direct racist action from one uh, individual to another. A few years after that, I took one of Martha's courses oh. um, at the YWCA. It's called Unlearning Racism. And from there and through my work, I really just became more engaged and decided to really take it on as something that I wanted to do myself. I think one of the problems with the idea of sort of systemic racism or structural racism is that it's, it can be a very amorphous concept. And for that reason, it's not always clear how we take that concept and do something to correct it. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Tyron Lannister on trial in Game of Thrones when he says, they, they, the ominous they. And it's like, well, what is they? Who, 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 is, who is doing this? I'm just not sure from that perspective that it ends up being especially helpful. I wouldn't go with an amorphous they. I think there's places where the institutions have helped to embed certain things. So, I, I mean, there's lots of institutions we could think about, and I'm not an expert in any of them. So I was just thinking about housing. So if you look at um, redlining and what that did in our country, it made it tough for, I'm just gonna pick on Rhonda because I know her. Um, if you were trying to look in my neighborhood, which is mostly white, although there's people of color in my neighborhood, would you be shown that house? Would you be shown that neighborhood? Would you be assumed to be okay? But then it's not just, could she find something? Would the bank give her a loan that would allow her to have access to the money to be able to do that? And in Milwaukee, it's been particularly challenging for families of color in that a lot of banks weren't willing to loan the money. So when you talk about an institution, I'm just picking housing. We could pick any number of other things, but you know, it's, it seems like there's ways that um, many of those different groups were in cahoots with each other, I guess, for lack of a better word. So certainly there are racial disparities that exist in this world. I, I would think everyone here would agree with that. I think the, the issue becomes, though, an assumption that when those disparities exist, it must be caused by racism. If you look at the 2022 census data, the top five ethnicities in terms of income, none of them were white. It was Indians, Filipinos, Iranians, South African, and Lebanese. In fact, 71 of 71, the, the very bottom was Appalachian, so rural whites. I think when we look at something like uh, a purported disparity in housing, for example, if we're gonna actually address it, I, I think we need to get granular about it and get down to the actual evidence of discrimination and tr try and address it at that root core uh, from a policy perspective. Well, it is certainly true, at least, that because of racist policies of the past, black Americans on average were not able to build wealth in the way that other Americans were. I mean, that I don't think we, would you dispute that, Skylar? Again, I, I think when you just look at the, the census data, again, the, the, the top five households, or the top five ethnicities right now are Indian, Filipino, Iranian, 
South African and Lebanese. If we're talking about something like white privilege, how, how do we factor in the fact that uh, Indian households are earning an average income of $152,000 a year? So that's what I'm talking about, man. Every time people talk about systemic racism and those type of debates, they talk about white people versus black people. They never bring up other races. And I, I say this a lot, or I said this in a few of my videos, white people, if you go by household to household, do not earn the most per household. It's Indian Americans. It's going to be like Indian Americans or you want to be specific Asian Americans. But they never mention this. And the reason I'm bringing up how much they make is because economics is one of the biggest por portions of privilege. If you make the most, that's it, it doesn't really get more privileged than this. But people always ignore this. They act like this just doesn't exist. And I'm happy that he brought it up. I want to see how they're going to respond to this, though. Uh, and, and again, the Appalachians, which rural whites from particular regions of this country, are at the very bottom with about $50,000 in household income. So I, if we're concerned about an income disparity, fair enough, but I still think the way we would address it would be at the individual level. If we're talking, say, like an affirmative action program for college financial aid, why can't you just provide that aid to poor students? Why does it have to be provided to students of a particular race? Okay, mercy. Um, so where did those statistics come from? What was the source? That's the census data for, for the last U.S. Do you census. know the majority of black people or minority people do not even answer those surveys. So those numbers are very, very, very skewed. And so one of, one of the things for me is the problem is with a lot of people of other races, I could say Caucasians or Appalachians, as you uh, so nicely put it, is that nobody comes to the neighborhood and check out what is actually going on. Everybody looks at everything from an aerial view and tell us that we are OK. And so what do you mean black people aren't answering the census data? Whose fault is that? That's black. If you're saying black people aren't answering it, that's black people's fault. <laughs> you see how she just completely, completely, completely went by everything he just said and just went straight to victimhood. Completely. And I'm not making this up. We're watching the same video. He said, yeah, um, Indian Americans, Asian Americans make the most. How come they just don't give the aid for affirmative action to people from lower incomes? She, Her first question was, where did you get this data? He said, yeah, I got it from a very reputable research um, site. She said, well, even though the data is true, black people don't even answer those surveys. So... What do you want him to say? You got the data from Jesus Christ himself? Like, what? what is what is he supposed to say to that? Like, I don't even know. With those statistics, you would almost say that there is there is no poverty. There is no racism in America. You got the Indians on top and the and, and where, where the is the African-American and the, the white people on the bottom. So it's those bad statistics that you use that would have everybody thinking, we the, the the new wealth class of America. Well, and, and it's just not true. Milwaukee is inherently one of the racist cities in, in the nation, most segregated in the nation. And so and they also use shared revenue, which takes the money from the north side of Milwaukee and use it to fund projects in the entire state of Wisconsin. And while we have roads that have been bad for 30, 40, 50 years, I'm 47, so I drive up and down those same roads that have been broken for the last 50 years. We equally pay taxes on the north side of Milwaukee, but our taxes are not going back to us because of statistics like that that say there's no problem over here. What I hear what you're saying is like, well, if you say that Indians are number one, and people from the Appalachia, white people from Appalachia, are the, the bottom. bottom. At the bottom. So well, then, we have, correct. And we don't even have a name. So who is Sub-Saharan <laughs> well, Africans? I'm, I'm sure it ain't it's, us. I'm sure it's in there where, somewhere. Where are they at? And where are they from? But he, I even I got a problem with the term from. African American. My yeah. husband, who's from Libya, oh, okay. immigrated here, is an African American. Mm -hmm. I'm just American. And so, if, I mean, if we look at that, if you want to say Black American, White American, I mean, all the terms are just skewed and throw it off and so is again bad data like that that uh leaves us where we are and it, it creates more problems
You're right. saying that it's looking at the issue of racism from the point of view that if you have group X that is doing better than group Y, or if there's a standard to be in group X and the uh, group Y is not making that standard, then the standards must be racist because the group doesn't fit the demographic. The, the more interesting conversation I think to have is when we only look through the lens of race, what else are we not seeing? When we talk about racism as a black family, we are, it is born and indoctrinated that there is racism. These are the things you got to look out for. There's a green book on how to travel through Wisconsin, through cities, how you got to navigate. Currently? We're, there's still a green book. Absolutely. There's certain, Whoa. there's still sundown towns and places that we can't go as black Americans. Mm -hmm. So when we get down down to if, if you guys never acknowledge that there is still racism there is still oh, yeah. systemic racism me as a mother of no you're not going to do this you're not going to do this there are sundown towns in america but when you say there's systemic racism you're saying that america as a whole is systemically racist towards black people and we are not allowed the same rights and privileges as other groups of people which is not it's literally not true. I'm not even talking about what I personally believe. It is literally just not true. There was a point in American history where there was systemic racism, where we did genuinely did not have the same rights as other groups of people. There was a point in time. But if you're going to sit here and honestly say there's systemic racism, you're it's kind of like you're trying to gaslight us. It's just not true. It is not true at all. Stop trying to use isolated situations in isolated circumstances to allude to a racist and systemic issue. It's just inaccurate. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like what you're saying has truth to it because it just doesn't. And if you say America is systemically racist, you also be saying just the, the, the world forever is just systemically racist. Do you understand the problem here? Let's continue. Five black young men, I have to tell my kids how to act. When you go here, this is what you do. You have to make this call. You have to sit, be still, put your hands out the window. Um, don't make any sudden moves when you're getting pulled over. I have to groom my sons on how to act in white America. What you just told me seems like examples of of cultural racism, I guess. I guess maybe I struggle with the word structural based on what you just said, because it sounds like you're, you've just related examples of, of individual instances of racism that you might have to deal with. So, But it's the, the structure, oh, the power structure, structures. Right. The power structures well, then that- You wouldn't have to deal with that. Use them to oppress. Right. But, but to, so to push back on that though, j just a little bit, obviously there are racist people in America and those people should be, should be named and they should be punished, and the, the, the victims should be compensated. I think, though, when we talk about systemic racism, at least the first thing that comes in my mind as a lawyer and an advocate is the, the laws. And I will just straight up say, there are only two races in this country that face legal discrimination, and it's uh, whites and Asians. And in fact, I have a, uh, a case right now at the Wisconsin Court of Appeals over a scholarship program that the state of Wisconsin runs. It's the Minority Undergraduate Retention Scholarship. And that scholarship is uh, given out only to certain races, and, and one of them is not Asian. I'm not aware of any laws or programs in this country that specifically discriminate against black people, Hispanic people, Indians. I feel like there's a question of using race as a proxy for class. Oh, that happens a lot. So I think Skylar's point is that if, if you just help people based on economics, you're going to disproportionately help black people. Does it not make more sense for our policies to be about economics as opposed to using skin color as a proxy for economics. Do you really want people to think I can't do better than mm -hmm. I'm doing because of my race? Is that the message that we want to say because my because this outcome is going to be determined by my race? That's what we're teaching in some ways when we focus on racism no. only. No, that's not what that means. If I hear if I hear that is I never that the desperate I impact that outcome is because oh I no, it's not because I can't learn because of my race. It's well, I, I would agree. I, we wouldn't want to be no, saying that. I'm saying that's we should. Not the message. That. But now what he's saying is, don't help just the black people. He's representing a Thai Asian, person. Thai, Hmong, under the same laws 
as um, you would somebody from the civil rights or a black person that was discriminated against. And I just, I, I don't think it's fair. So they, a Thai Hmong person did not come over here and was on slavery and was uh, neglected and not giving the same resources. He so I'm assuming, this always happens when people talk about racial issues in America regarding the black community. They bring up, they bring up slavery, they bring up civil rights things, they bring up came over here, come over here, forced to come over here. And all I have to say is, when you talk about a systemic issue in America, why do you always refer to the past? Why is it never today? And I think that's a real question because if you're saying America has systemic racism, you're saying America has systemic racism, that's a really big cause. That's a really big thing to say. And I think if you are saying that, you should bring up things that are happening today. I will credit one person on here. They brought up redlining. I, I'm not really sure if that's happening today. I do know that's a more, at least historically speaking, a more recent thing. That's a fair thing, at least in my opinion. But when you talk about slavery or even if you talk about subjective things like teaching your son that he shouldn't he should do this when he gets pulled over and that your son you're teaching your kids they can't go here this type of stuff is not even based in reality it's more so based in your personal opinions and beliefs about police officers or beliefs about the world it's not really real things so how come when you talk about systemic issues it's always past tense it's never present tense but let's continue he just came over here and now he get to fall under the guise of the same laws that was put in place to protect African, as you call them, or black American. Um, when Biden got into office, he repealed that Trump executive order. On the first day of his office, he wrote the following. The federal government should pursue a comprehensive approach to advancing equity for all. And affirmatively advancing equity is the responsibility of the whole of our government. For instance, the order required federal agencies to create a plan for investing specifically in underserved communities. I mean, everybody would agree with equality. We all want equality and want to enjoy equality. But equality of outcomes is disparate impact. Equality of outcomes is different than equality of opportunity. Say it's more. different. It's different Say because you, you, because you cannot guarantee the equality of outcome. The, the, everybody's outcome is based on a variety of things. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying, uh, first of all, there's no standardization because in the, in the equality of outcomes, we all have to end up at the same place. I get it that we can all start at the same place, and of course this is Kamala Harris's thing, that what we all have to end up at the same place. There's too many factors that determine mm -hmm. where people mm -hmm. end up. Mm -hmm. It's it's their uh, meritocracy, their, their working ethic, it's their family culture, it's their intelligence, mm -hmm. it's their schooling, it's their decision. Like, there's a many, well, many just, things. It's like, just let not racism be one of those things. How about so that? Well, that's I the main guess thing. I would want to know what that <laughs> means. Fine. because so let's just not let that be one of them. <laughs> But, but, I, we, but if racism is already, or racial discrimination is already illegal on already, the federal level, the question is what, what why more is can you do? And, and, yeah. uh, it's Martha, it's illegal to, to rape people, but people still get raped. Well, they get raped a whole lot less because it's illegal. I mean, you know, there's only... <laughs> no, no, is that Skyler? wrong, Skylar? So, so I, 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 I think we got to back up oh, for a second. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and I think this, this goes to, to your last I'm point, Corey. Uh, we need to think for a second about whether equality of outcome is actually something we care about. Okay, because- We just want the opportunity. Or if it's possible. That's all we keep, keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah. It, and I would agree that equal opportunity is really important, but equal opportunity is very different than equal outcome. So again, just to go back to a, a stat that I gave earlier, 54% uh, of NFL players are black. That's, no one thinks that's a problem, and it's not a problem, and I'm not saying it's a problem. But I don't know. what percentage I of don't the owners know if, are white? I, exactly. Are I'm about to say, I don't know uh, about if nobody thinks that's a problem. He little, talked about the employer. NFL and he doesn't hear One anybody complaining about that. Of and I'm saying that that's Why are they yelling like this? Why are they yelling like this? Like, and this is the problem. Most people are not critical thinkers. They're not critical thinkers. That's really, that's really the basis of it. If you're watching this video, and I'm not saying they're slow or they're dumb. I'm just saying that they have a belief, and it doesn't matter what you say, their belief is not going to change. And that's the problem. If nobody can convince you 
about anything, you have an issue. Unless you are an expert at something, then you should be able to be convinced on anything. Unless it's like loving your kids, then I would hope no one could convince you not to love your kids. I'm, I'm just saying like normal stuff like politics, sport takes, stuff like that. I'm not talking about real deep issues, but the fact that you can't be convinced on anything, it's just, it's just really scary. Employer out of many. How many right. other companies are so white dominant? You talk so, about one compared to how many companies in the world. Point, point is just, even in that, you have to think about why is that? Yeah. Yes, and I just want to be very clear. My, my point is mm -hmm. that just because a disparity exists doesn't mean you can conclude there's discrimination. To give one more example, I'm left-handed, okay? Six of the last 14 presidents have been left-handed. That is not evidence of some left-handed new world order to put down on the, the right-handed majority. That is just, for whatever reason, how the car cards have have played out. So, and I, there'd be it would be silly to even say that we need some kind of uh, right-handed affirmative action to correct for that. So, so my point is, to the extent that what equity means is equality of outcome, and that we should strive for equality of outcome, I'm not. I, I just I can't I can't agree with that. It seems to me that the aim of these various executive orders and the and then there are executive orders like for each, there's like one on uh, um, uh, Hispanic uh, equity. There's one on there are two on black equity. There's one. I mean, it's what you were saying about the segmenting of the population. But they say that the point of these is that we want the workforce to reflect the diversity of America, which means if you sort of read between the lines here, like they're saying we want agencies to ensure that, for instance, the staffing levels uh, mm. reflect demographics, which in effect, I think means that you are going to, on some level, be hiring people and promoting people based on race. So having sort of like presented it in that way, like what do you guys think of that? Is equity the same as equality? And I don't think it is. No. And so shouldn't it be about equity in outcomes that where you start and where you end is gonna look very different? Because I think the example you gave you could call it a different thing, but when you're saying equity and equality, how are you, what are you, how are you those different? Because equality, it's like I equality. So we all took our shoes off and put them in the room, in the middle of the room floor. We all have two shoes on, right? Mm -hmm. And then I said, let's all grab. I might end up with one of yours and one of Ben's. So I've got two shoes, but I'm probably not going to get very far walking in those shoes. So that's equality, right? We all had the shoes, throw them in. We all got two shoes. So you're saying some people are start their starting line is behind, right? There's some people it, are behind. It, like yeah, people start here, and other people start here. It, yeah. Well, well equity I, is make, just meeting people where they need to be met so they can be successful. So everybody doesn't have. You could just like she said, just the two, just because you all got shoes don't mean. But if the thing that that that, that a person needs to be met where they are right. is preferential treatment and the, and getting a job that maybe someone else is more qualified for. I no, mean, is, see is that it, now that's, well, that's the what I'm asking. No, that's so the book. Where that, is the that, part that, where the That's where happens. the racism comes coming at because that's always. You know what I say about DEI? That Definitely was the next question. earned it, baby. It ain't. No, bro, you can't. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. You know, the Supreme Court just had a ruling that said colleges were not allowed to use race in their admissions process anymore. In one of the most prominent schools in the world, Howard University, I mean, Harvard, Harvard University had a 4% drop in African-American um, intakes. The Hispanic community's um, rates went up 2%. The Asian-American stayed at 37%. And I think the white Americans rate went up. Um, don't know the percentile for them. So when you use the phrase DEI stands for definitely earned it. And I'm assuming she's saying this under the premise that there's a set base of qualifications that companies look for. And as long as you meet that set base, you're allowed to pick anyone above that um, lower threshold, whether you're right here above it or you're up here above it. Here's the problem with that. If you're going against a meritocracy, which diversity, equity, which equity does naturally because it tries to make jobs equitable or opportunities equitable, which is anti-meritocracy it doesn't show that you definitely earned it 
or you can say that they earned it but someone earned it more which defeats the purpose of earning it in general because if you have a requirement list and someone meets more of these requirements but they don't get a job or a position because someone else's skin color or gender how do you definitely earn it do you see the disconnect here i ain't, I ain't get here because i you let me here because i can't read two sentences no i can't even get past the interview if i don't have certain qualifications to get here if the job says that you need to have a um a bachelor's degree to get this job that's the minimum requirement i'm coming through the door with a master's degree okay because so i didn't you didn't just give me this because i look black you didn't just give me this because i uh am female but i got this because i have qualifications for it now the fact that i have one of those identifiers and that may serve your company meet need, then so be it. But you better believe I'm not coming through because I don't have the skill set or the knowledge base to be there. Well, it's nothing yeah. given that's not that haven't been given to me. I and I'm about to be overqualified like so many, especially when you start talking about um, black women overqualified. Well, we, we would all want the same thing, of course. I mean, to. That's an interesting comment because of course we would want people to be judged by what they bring to the job. We wouldn't want someone to be judged by their color. That's, I guess, why we're arguing or why there is a conversation about- And I'm about just saying people just assume that about people. Sweep us like people have been calling what? Um, VP Harris. Oh, she's a DEI hire. Or even me, I've been, I'm, the, I'm the only black in a lot of spaces. Right now I do a lot of stuff in outdoor recreation. Do you know how many people of color are in outdoor recreation of any shade? No. Close to none, baby. Absolutely. That's a billion dollar but industry where hardly no right. people of color. Okay? Yeah. So don't tell me because I work at this camp and I become a director at the camp that I'm a DEI hire and it's 98%. <laughs> I just like some of this stuff just be laughable. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't it follow that if you have a proponent that says we have to we have to uh, train consistently the principles of DEI, wouldn't that be setting yourself up for that feeling? If you if you're training people to hey, we got to look at race, we got to look at race, we got to look at disparities, and then you don't. I mean, I wouldn't see you as a DEI hire because I would listen to. Do you know the job? Do you seem to be a leader? Do you have the qualifications? If somebody doesn't see that, they that is to their detriment and they that Bro, you can't bruh. Here's the problem. Some people are DEI hires. She just said DEI means definitely earned it. That's a positive connotation. So how is DEI hire a negative connotation? Do you see the problem here? If someone says, Yeah, you're a DEI hire, and you are actually a DEI hire. You think that's a positive thing. I'm not trying to be disrespectful right now either. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. If you believe in DEI, you should also believe that being called a DEI hire is a good thing. But you see how they don't believe that. They don't believe that being called DEI hire is a good thing. They think it's a bad thing to be called a DEI hire. But they support DEI. You can't make this up, man. You can't, you can't really make this up. But... I'm going to finish this out because I want to know what they're going to say. That would be negative, right? Right. I'm saying on the outside, don't just assume that any person of color got a job that they were not qualified for. So you don't for. want me to judge just you based on that or on the race. Just because they are a person okay. of color. So that's, we agree. I feel like that's a lot of the yeah. racist kickback from that with affirmative action or anything else. Yeah. It's like, oh, you just only got this because you were black. Baby, I got this because I'm so, qualified and probably yeah. more qualified than you, probably more qualified right. than my boss. Right. Right. So right. don't, don't but without say the, that. But without, without racial preferences, there wouldn't be a yeah, reason for anyone to think that your race had anything to do with it, right? But it wasn't our race no? that caused the law to be enacted. Exactly. It was your race. And it wasn't our Skyler, race going for Skyler. racial preferences. Skyler, Skyler. <laughs> because the so that number was one a, in essence, the that's right been the wrong. In, in place for a long time is this. And everybody else is trying to figure out how can I get more to that. So I do think it is racist to look at a particular individual who is black, Hispanic, Indian, whatever it is, and say that particular whoever they are. Right. It, 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 whoever that particular person is and to say that particular person benefited from affirmative action. That is applying a, a, a stereotype to that individual person. And th that to me is, is, I would say, the sort of the definition of racism. However, I think there's a big difference between talking about whether specific individuals benefited and whether groups benefited, because it's undeniable 
the, the, the very point of affirmative action is to benefit certain racial groups. So I, I think that we have to at least all concede that on, a, on average, there are beneficiaries of affirmative action and that it, it's based on race. Yeah, because your race was inherently racist and now it's so wrong that you guys are trying my, to write. My, my race so was now you had racist. to put. Do you mean to say that? I'm Do you mean sure. to say that white people are inherently racist? I didn't or? say that. No, that's what you said. Well, I, know, I, got, I'm I, I just told it's you my family's like a Kim folks yeah, yeah, yeah. melting pot. Yeah. Uh, I got white friends. I'm a, like y'all say, I got black friends. I got white <laughs> friends. No, I don't believe white people are inherently racist, but there have been some things that have been done by all of our ancestors that we are not proud of. And again, we would never have this conversation or have to put this stuff on the book if the world was colorblind if just using what he already said about because you definitely said white people are inherently racist you definitely said that you said your race is inherently racist you said that and i'm not letting you get away with it because that's what you said now you want to backtrack no speak your truth speak your mind you think all white people are inherently racist you think DEI is what you deserve, but you also don't want people to say DEI. You, they also don't want people to call you a DEI hire, or you don't want people to call people a DEI hire. I don't, I don't really know what you believe right now. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what you stand for right now. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to end the video here because I don't really understand where she's getting at. But anyways, LFR Jojo, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.